Hey, what's up guys? This is Drew with The Lone Wolf and we're continuing our look with the Commonsol Meta AM and the Meta Power. The Meta AM is a really awesome 170 mil front, 160 mil rear uh, enduro all mountain bike. Retails at $41.99 with a really awesome spec uh, XT brakes, uh, GX1 Eagle drivetrain, and the Commonsol Meta Power uh, retails at $49.99, though they have e bikes starting well below that price point. Uh, it has an EX1 e-bike specific uh, SRAM drivetrain, code brakes, and uh, RockShox 160 millimeter fork and 150 rear end. Uh, so 10 millimeter difference in travel, uh, 20 pound difference in weight. 50 pounds for the power, 30 for the Meta AM. When we first started this review, we were a little hesitant. Oh god, that's definitely heavier. <clears throat> I don't know, man. It looks heavy, and I like light bikes that are fun to pop and play with and move around, but everybody loves these, so I guess we gotta give it a try. We were already kind of haters of the e-bikes, and although we were open-minded enough to try it, we really didn't expect it to do very well in a type of uh, downhill and aggressive mountain bike riding that we prefer most. So we started out riding the Meta AM, partially because we had a, a battery issue and we're waiting to get in touch with Shimano. Um, and the time aboard the Meta AM uh, really wowed our whole group. Instantly we felt comfortable aboard the bike, uh, with the exception of the handlebar sweep, which was a little weird. Um, once we got those adjusted, uh, that bike was unbelievable it felt like we'd been riding it for a long time the fox shocks blew our minds the the rear shock especially just ate up terrain better than so many other bikes we've ridden on some of the same test trails the only real downsides that we could come up with would be that it's low so if you are a guy who does like to pedal and climb um, it is fairly slack and pretty low so uh, pedal strikes may be an issue if you're climbing very rocky or rooty areas um, Again, the, the benefits of that are on the descent. It's got insane cornering, um, low center of gravity, very predictable, very stable. Um, for, the, for the value at you know, $4,200, uh, I mean, that's a no-brainer. That bike just absolutely rules. So after I'd spent a sufficient amount of time on the Meta AM, I passed it off to another tester and started riding the Meta Power with our new battery. Uh, that bike, <laughs> was really neat um, as I expected you know I felt like a superhero when I was climbing trails that uh, you know even when I was in very good shape kicked my ass this bike you know I was able to best personal uh, records on 16 minute climbs by four and a half to five minutes um, and still was getting a pretty good workout you know my heart rate was still up I was still breathing uh, I just instead of feeling like I needed to sit down and you know puke for a minute, felt like I was ready to turn around and go hit the descent and do another. Um, where I and some of the other testers were a bit hesitant on the e-bike performance was when it came time for the descent. Um, at 50 pounds, we were pretty convinced that that extra 20 pounds would be a deal breaker, would hold us back, uh, and would generally just make it not very fun to ride. Um, we quickly learned that wasn't entirely true. While it is heavier and it does take a little bit more of a, a conscious e 
effort and thought into making moves happen. Uh, there wasn't any time that we were riding this bike where we weren't able to do something we wanted to do because of the weight. Um, the bike flies through the air incredibly stable. The traction is phenomenal. Um, in honesty, it has us reevaluating how light we want to build our personal bikes in the future because the difference is, is very noticeable in how well that bike stays planted. Uh, loose, flat corners on fire road sections at speed felt so confident. Tires weren't squirming or drifting at all. So uh, it sort of made us realize that light isn't always the best uh, when it comes to all aspects of bike performance. Now, um, aside from traction, uh, the playfulness of the bike was pretty good. As you could expect, you know, 50 pounds is still a lot to kind of whip and snap and pop around, but we never didn't have fun on that bike. Um, it didn't keep us from having a good time. In fact, some of our fastest times up and down hills were aboard this bike. The traction and confidence allowed us to attack corners much harder than we could on a lighter um, pedal bike. Obviously, you know, having the ability like on the Meta AM to pop and dab and, you know, do the little tire taps or bonks, or whatever, isn't the same. And for some, if you love that style of riding and wanting to pop and play, uh, you know, hopefully in the near future, these bikes are gonna drop some weight. But for now at 50 pounds, you know, it might be something that's, that's a little bit uh, disconcerting. But aside from that, the, the performance of the e-bike was very impressive overall. Um, the suspension spec, we didn't love as much as we did on this bike. Commonsole does offer a model, one above this, um, and it has a Fox spec on it. We would love to try that out or put you know those shocks on this bike and see how much better it would uh, perform. Code brakes had power, but we did not love them. Um, we're not fans of the lack of consistency with SRAM products, and the lever reach adjuster uh, has given us problems on more brakes than we can count. It's just a very finicky temperamental system, and you know, when you've got a 50 pound bike, it, it, you need the brakes to work. I, I would say that our whole crew in general has had their minds changed when it comes to e-bikes. Uh, after completing the first ride, one of the guys, you know, we asked in the parking lot on a scale of one to 10, how, how much have you changed your mind regarding e-bikes? And he looked at the ground and shook his head and said about an eight or a nine. Um, it, I felt probably about the same way. I didn't want to like them. I, I felt they had a place for trail builders or, you know, possibly some people with disabilities, etc. But I thought there's no way I'm gonna have as much fun as I could on a regular mountain bike. And uh, the reality was I, I did. And in many cases I had more fun because it allowed me to ride farther, faster, um, and deeper into places, you know, even in my hometown that I'd never been because I, I would see a little overgrown offshoot that I thought was, you know, a, an animal track. And I didn't want to end up deep in the bottom of some canyon having to hike or pedal my way straight out of a cliff. And when I was on the Meta Power, that would never became an issue. If I saw something, I turned, I went, and in many cases, I ended up finding really awesome trails that I'd never ridden in a place I've spent 20 years riding a bike. So uh, th those were just some of the experiences that I think really turned me around on my perception of e-bikes. Obviously, one of the other main issues was getting out with my friend Gary, who's a recovering quadriplegic, and you know, is only able to ride with me or I with him when we're doing short shuttles or pedal rides that are you know under a couple of miles. And with him on this bike, we're able to go well over 10 miles. He's been able to climb and go places he's never been on a mountain bike before, and you know being able to, to ride with him while he's cresting new summits and dropping into new trails that he's never been able to do and wouldn't be able to do without an e-bike was was something that was kind of eye-opening and really you know made me uh, reevaluate I guess what uh, what my thoughts were on e-bikes and accessibility for for disabled riders aside from that it, it's 
been a little difficult, I guess, to put both these bikes in a head-to-head -head comparison in, in some aspects because although they are very similar, uh, I mean, in just about every way, they do ride fairly differently. Um, I wouldn't say one rides bad and one rides great. They both ride very well in different ways. Um, an e-bike is an e-bike. I have learned that I can't compare how an e-bike rides to how a traditional mountain bike rides because they are, in fact, they're different beasts, they're different animals. So um, I, I will say I had a lot more fun than I expected or wanted to have on the Meta Power. The Meta AM really blew all of our minds and is an incredibly capable, solid, stout bike at an insane value. Um, so props to Common Sol for, for putting out awesome bikes at great price points. And be sure to check out both of our detailed reviews on these bikes at the website and on our YouTube channel. Thanks very much.